Okay. See, one of the important points that I am trying to make uh, through last couple of classes is the following. While looking at principles and parameters as a theoretical approach to study natural language, it is okay to say and the theoretical apparatus predicts that elements in a sentence at a deep structure, at a conceptual representation, at the level of conceptual representation move from one place to the other. Okay? However, what I want you to understand and where, where I need your attention is to, under, to try and understand the motivations behind that. It is not just it is not just that theoretical apparatus predicts so, it is also that we see compelling reasons for such a movement. Okay? And to and, and so far I have tried to give you some examples from uh, we started with WH movement, where you saw examples from a language like English that there is empirical evidence that tense gets displaced from its original position that is from the verb cluster. Okay? It gets displaced. Then all WH words get fronted. For, for the fronting of tense, we simply say it gets displaced. But for the fronting of WH words in English, we know for sure that it gets past tense. That is, it is, it moves beyond the tense marker, right? We have that, that evidence. Then we started looking at an example of MP movement, which was through the discussion of passivization. I uh, will I'll discuss little bit more on, on passivization today in order to see what we were discussing uh, around uh, last few minutes yesterday. And then I am going to talk about one more construction, hopefully we will be able to address that today, that is called raising. Okay? Raising by definition means moving up. So, we want to see what are the situations in which we see things moving up on, on their own. So, we, we see movement of functional elements in terms of tense, then we see empirical reasons to displace WH words to the front and then we, yesterday we saw examples where noun phrases which are technically part of VP that is which is which is a complement of V has compelling reasons to move and then there are there are places available for that uh, uh, that kind of a movement which are technically called landing sites because when when an when an element moves or needs to move it needs to go somewhere it, it needs to have a space in the whole uh, framework in the whole apparatus. So, we want to see that and then we will look at raising. So, as I told you, we have seen so far the evidence and motivation both for this kind of a movement. And so far we have looked at examples from WH movement and NP movement. We are going to talk a little bit more about NP movement and then we will look at raising constructions which are also known as 
raising verbs. Okay. So we started looking at uh, passives and active set of sentences with these examples, and we saw that one the sentence sentences like Sri Lanka beat India in T20 World Cup final is an active sentence, police caught the thief is an active sentence, whereas Sri Lanka, India were beaten in the T20 World Cup final is a passive sentence and thief was caught is a passive sentence. The, the way English passive verb works is we, we have an example of active verb, it is it's a normal verb, every, every normal verb is an active verb. One of the additional things of an active verb is its subject has a theta role of an agent. Okay? It is an agent too. What happens in a passive verb is the whole idea is about the third form of the verb with another B. That is verb B and then, then a participle is together they are called passive verb. The, there are two important aspects about a passive verb. One, that a passive verb would not allow a noun phrase with a theta role as a subject. In other words, in the subject position of the passive verb, you, you have the picture in, your, in mind? in the subject position of a passive verb, okay, theta roles are not assigned. I am coming to theta role for a moment, uh, for, for a few more moments in a minute. And the second feature of a passive verb is the verbs themselves do not assign accusative cases to their complements. Okay. Remember these two things additionally subjects are not assigned theta roles, subjects are not assigned theta roles and verbs do not assign accusative cases. And it is not just about a passive verb, it is the feature of the entire passive morphology together. Now, besides these two points, what are the things where we need to pay attention, which are which are not listed here. And let me, let me talk about some of them. Uh, in other words, I can simply remind you about them. You already know those things. So here are the things. What do we know about subjects in a sentence? What do we know about subject in a sentence? They agree with the verb, verb that is fine. But even before that, we know that there must be a subject. We cannot have a sentence which does not have a subject. Right? Now, let me spend a minute about, a th about theta roles. Uh, in, in one hour, we have talked about theta roles. We did not dwell upon theta roles in, in much details. But the, the thing is, wh what did I tell you about cases uh, when we were discussing case? That there is a, in every single sentence of every language, if you have a noun phrase, that noun phrase must have a case. This is a rule, this is a principle. If a noun phrase does not have a case, then it is out. By out, we mean the sentence becomes ungrammatical. So, a noun phrase in a sentence must have a case. Okay? Similarly, a noun phrase in a sentence must have a theta role. Now, theta role is is more of a semantic nature than of syntactic nature. However, such semantic elements do have a role in syntax and that role is very simple, very obvious and that role is without a theta marked NP, the NP is not allowed in a sentence. Without, without a theta role, the NP is not allowed in a sentence. That is, it has its influence on the grammaticality of the sentence. Therefore, every NP must have a theta role. 
Now, what is the first problem that we see here? The uh, the uh, hold on. Uh, no, okay. I'll, I'll go through this. So, what's the first problem here? We have a we with the with a passive verb. The first problem we we run into is we have a verb which appears to be making a sentence also, but it says my subject, I will not assign theta role to my subject. Now, this, this seems to be a strange behavior, which means I am ready to follow principles of language to some extent. It, it starts sounding like politicians, I okay, will only follow part of it. Okay, I am not saying that I will not have a subject, I will have a subject, but I will not assign theta role to the subject. Now, the problem is a subject has to be a noun phrase and if it does not get a theta role, it is not allowed. Okay. So, in a, in a way it says, okay, fine, so you, you handle the problem, that is the that is my situation. That is one problem we run into with a passive verb. The second problem, the, the problem on the other side is equally bad. It is a transitive verb and a transitive verb must have an object and it says I, I just cannot do it. It's it's beyond my capacity. I cannot assign accusative cases to to objects. Whereas the problem is every n and an, a complement NP that is the NP that is the complement of the head V must get accusative case structurally under the notion of C command through that head, and this head just cannot assign accusative case. So the this, these are two fold problems, one of syntactic in nature, the other syntactic and semantic both. And this is where we land into this, this difficulty, where uh, when we, so, so parts of this I have already told you that the passive verb morphology is B plus participle, where external theta role is just not possible, by, by external theta role we mean like subject is external to the to the predicate. So, the theta role that it gets is also called external theta role and uh, therefore, the agent NP gets dropped from the active sentence. In other words, in a passive sentence there is we do not end up with a with a subject and then we have the verb which which is incapable of assigning case structurally. Okay? We, we talked about that. So, so look at the look at the deep structure, S structure, and deep structure of an active sentence. So in an active sentence, it's a it's an NP. At a, at S structure, Sri Lanka beat India. That's an active sentence where Sri Lanka is an agent. It subject it has an agent theta role. See this thing. We now we are looking at an active sentence. Beat the verb which is a transitive verb. India internal argument. As an object, it gets a accusative case structurally from the verb beat. Good, everything is taken care of in this sentence. When we look at the deep structure of a passive verb, then we see the problem that we were discussing. The problem is the spec position of IP does not remain, does not get an agent theta role. Okay? It does not get a theta role and it remains empty. If, if, an, if an NP is not allowed, is, is, is not assigned a theta role, then it will not appear in a position. So, it remains em empty. And then the verb beaten, which is a participle verb, is incapable of assigning accusative case to its, to its object. Thus, the object rema remains hanging without a case. See the, see the problem? And that is the that is because of the nature of passive verb. You can you can ask a question here, which is a very legitimate and logical question, is how do you know or how do I know that the two things that you are saying happens to the subject and object? You, you understand the question? How do I know, or in other words, how do I believe that these two, two things happen? 
The answer to this question is it happens because of the nature of the verb which is B plus participle and B plus participle verbs do not, uh, do not assign theta role to external argument and case to internal arguments. So, we are when we are saying no theta role and no case, we are not talking about a generic normal situation. We are only talking about participle verb with a B which is was beaten. This kind of verb runs into difficulties of this sort. See this? See this thing? Now, it, th this, therefore, it runs into case filter which says no NP in a sentence is allowed without a proper case. Okay? No NP in a sentence is allowed without a proper case. Theta criterion says every NP must be assigned one and only one theta role. So, if we put an NP in the subject position without a theta role, that is also out. So, theta criterion and case filter together prohibits a passive sentence of this type that you have seen, which is of this type. Then what is the, what is the solution is? So, in, in one sentence the problem is passive sentences end up with no subjects and uncase marked object in English. This is the problem in one sentence. The solution is the answer to the motivation for case marking, for, for movement. Such a situation forces the NP India to move out of its position in search of case. It moves out in search of case. Where does it go to? Luckily, in the same sentence, you have the specifier position of IP empty. Why is it empty? The, the, the English sentence is not important. I want, to, I, I want your attention to the logical development of this. Why is it empty? We have just… It does not… The, the verb cannot assign a theta role, therefore there is no, no NP is going there, therefore that is empty. Now, we are saying this NP India goes to there to that place, right? Which means we are saying this NP will not land into theta problems and it happens so because this NP in the object position of the verb, did what did it not receive in the object position of the verb? Case, but it received theta it received its theta role. Therefore, it does not need a new theta role. I will I'll give you examples, I will give you examples to believe this thing or I will talk about it so that you believe it. But hold on for a moment. Do you see that we are talking about two different layers? We are talking about theta layers and case layer. You understand this thing? Theta layer and case layer. One in the subject position, we have the theta problem. In the object position, we have case problem. So, in the object position, we did not have theta problem. So, that NP has a theta role of its own. So, equipped with the theta role in search of case, it can go to subject position, where even though the subject NP is not in a position to receive case, it can stay there because it does not need one, it already has one. Okay? So, it gets satisfied. Then what did it not have? It did not have case. Then the problem is it must be assigned case. So, there, and there is no problem of case in subject NP. It just does not get theta role. The case gets, the case it gets is from the I which is head and fill and then you remember rest of the drill of how does I assign nominative case to the spec IP? Through the notion of M command, very nice. So, through the notion of M command, it gets 
nominative case in the subject position. All right. Then, then we get a sentence. Uh, yeah. So the uncase marked NP moves to the spec IP position. In this position, it receives case from infill. Since it was already theta marked in the internal argument position as an object, it does not require any theta role. Okay? And this becomes movement of an NP. Therefore, movement of an NP becomes a solution for this problem and also what it gives us, it preserves the structure of a sentence. That is, it ends up giving it a su subject. Look at, look at the last point, Stru structure preservation. Now look at the sentence. What, what do we have a passive sentence as India were beaten, right? In general also, we hear when people tell us about passives, objects become subject. Yesterday I told you, subjects do not become objects. They become adjuncts because they do not go to object position. That is true. But objects do become subjects. How do we, how can we say convincingly that objects become subject? And if it becomes subject, then why are we talking about object anymore? We need to say so. We look at the structure. We need to say so. The NP India is now in the subject position. Therefore, it is the subject. It fills the position of the subject under the principle of a structure preservation. Therefore, it is the subject. And it receives nominative case above all, above all everything else. It allows itself to receive a nominative case. Okay? Therefore, it is definitely a subject. All right? Now, in the subject position, what it is not is in the subject position, what it is not is what is it what is it that it is not? It is not an agent. Because the sentence, the, the verb cannot assign agent theta role to it. And read the sentence out clearly, the passive sentence, and you know that India is not an agent in that passive sentence. India were beaten. Is it an agent? No. It still has the same theta role. What it had in the object position. What was the theta role in that position? In the object position? Theme or an experiencer. It is still has, has the same thing. India were beaten. The theta roles are not changed. Now, we, we, we get to see two things. Besides the structure preservation, at a surface level, we see two things. First thing is the theta criteria. One and only one theta role can be assigned. So once it had a theta role assigned, it does not change its theta role. And also what we see, there is a connection between active sentence and passive sentence. Okay? And once the passive morphology becomes once the verb becomes passive, what else happens? I have already told you the whole story. So, verbs being unable, passive verbs being unable to assign case to object and theta role to, end to, the, to the subject becomes the motivation for the movement of the object. We will still continue saying it an object because nothing comes in the position of object. If you see, what, what happens is, the, the, in the sentence, India were beaten. Even though we say, in the World Cup T20 final by Sri Lanka, in Bangladesh, at, five, at, at 9.30 pm, you continue saying whatever you want to say. The object position remains empty. Object position of the transitive verb remains empty. What do we mean when we say remains empty? There is a trace in that position. We, we do not speak that empty position. We do not see it with bare eyes, 
but that position is still empty for two reasons. One, that it is a transitive verb. And in a passive structure, even though the verb is transitive, it is allowed to have an empty position because that position cannot get a case. Therefore, an empty position is okay. Now, at this time, uh, I, I, I do not have this goal to, the, the goal of this class is not to take you any further from this point. Okay? Otherwise, and, and which, which is not underestimating your, your ability to understand, it is just about the, the class. But I do want to draw your attention to this thing. Do you see with clarity the empty position? Right? And, and I, I do not want to take you into the philosophical discussions of uh, ghosts and gods and all those things. You may not be able to see ghosts or God, but we can show you an empty position in a sentence. And that empty position is, no, is not baseless, it is the object of a transitive verb. We can say, and, and the, the claim is, the object of the transitive verb can also be 0. The object of a transitive verb can also be 0, in a sentence it remains 0. Now, in this sentence it is not really 0, it has moved, it has left its trace. And then in a further, further development of this theory, people have talked about a chain between, by chain I mean the chain relationship between the moved element and the trace. And there are, there are reasons to, to draw further generalizations from there and, and then further theoretical discussions. Which, which we will not get to. This making sense to you? All right. Any, any question about uh, passive, passivization? I, I did not have a structure, drawn a structure, but I, I, I am confident that you can draw that structure of movement from object position of V. In, in, within the VP, we have V and NP, right? From this NP position to the spec IP position, the, this movement should not be difficult for you, you can draw the, draw the movement, right. So, uh, any, any other question before I talk about raising constructions? Yes, yes, short answer is yes, I, I have discussed just now, you can say more things, nothing fulfills the object position. By Sri, by, by Sri Lanka is an adjunct. We have discussed the distinction between adjunct and complement. And you can apply those distinctions, those, those things and see, even if you drop by Sri Lanka, the sentence is still good. India were beaten. And before we started all these uh, theoretical discussions, I had talked to you about the function of a passive verb. The whole, the, the primary function of a passive sentence is to, uh, to remove attention, remo remove focus from who, who is doing, that is from agenthood. Therefore, agent is suppressed, agent is out. Okay? Thieves were caught. It, it has been claimed. Have you heard people talking about these things? In a, in a scientific discussion, this kind of language is not appreciated much. It has been claimed. If you write such a sentence, people will tell you, please specify who. Right? So, those who write such sentences or those who say such sentences purposely say so because I do not want to talk about who. It has been reported. Right? The idea is I, I just do not want to claim any responsibility or I do not want to blame anyone. Uh, but I will still need to talk about it. The only way to take care of this problem is to use a passive sentence. Just, just pay attention to a passive sentence when peop, either people are saying a passive sentence or they are writing a passive sentence. See the, 
see the intention of such a use. So the same thing I articulated as the function of passive verb, passive sentence is to remove attention from the focus. We do not want to, suppose I say, I claimed, right? I, I claim, what is the problem in saying that I claim that political parties are corrupt? When I do not want to say so, right? then I say, it is said that political parties are corrupt. Now, I am not putting anyone, this responsibility to anybody. The only, only way to do so is to, is to use a passive construction. Okay? That is about the function of language. But as far as formal properties of language is concerned, I have shown you how active and passive sentences are taken care of. At the same time, uh, how a passive sentence generates motivation for movement. In, and it gives you an example, it, it has tenets of motivation for movement and then it shows you in a categorical way, leaving the trace empty, uh, that an element has moved from its original position to the, to a different position. And in this case, the difference between a WHNP, that was a question sentence, and passive sentence. The difference is, in a WH sentence, the WH word goes to the specifier position of a CP, where there is no question of theta roles or uh, cases. In this case, this is more precise a case, where we are saying that the NP, when it moves, it does not go beyond the sentence. It remains within the sentence and not only it remains within the sentence, it, when it lands in a particular place, it receives nominative case also. Okay? Because without a nominative sentence, nomi without a nominative case, the NP does not fulfill the requirement of being a subject. And as long as the sentence did not have a subject, the sentence was not good. The moment it lands there, it receives nominative case, it becomes the subject and then the sentence becomes all right. So, it is not an ordinary evidence of a trivial movement from one place to the other. And the object position remains completely empty. So, so it is clear example that it, it was an object. Now it became a subject for for the various reasons that we discussed. Clear? Okay. Uh, if you have more, you can ask. But let me let me begin with this. See, uh, we have seen two clear clear cases of movements, right? Now I want to show you. I, I mean, I'm not. I don't mean that I'm not showing you. I'm going to show you unclear cases of movement. That's not the point. There are some verbs in English. Let's see how they they work. Okay? So, some of the similar things that we have discussed just now are the problems of some more verbs, not just passive verbs. For example, a verb like seem or appear, okay, runs into difficulties, which is when we say a sentence like John seems to be angry, okay? John seems to be angry. What is the subject of this verb? Subject of the verb is John. And what is the object of the verb seem? Look, look at the verb and then, then we will follow the discussion. Okay? The object of the verb is to be angry. Does this remind you of something, to be angry? What does it look like? Okay, forget it does not remind us anything. What does it look like? Is this an NP? No. It is a VP? Yes. It is an I. Somebody says it is an IP. Why do you think it is an IP? Because if it is a VP, then there is no space for VP. It ha a VP must be an IP. Okay, because within a bigger sentence, 
Okay? If you have a BP, which means it's an IP. We, for example, we, okay, let's, let's look at it this way. A sentence is an IP. In a sentence, we have an NP and VP. So in the sentence, John seems to be angry. The NP is John and VP is seems to be angry. Right? Within that VP, we cannot have another VP. The only thing that we can have is an IP. So even though this verb, this phrase to be angry looks like a VP, actually it is an IP. And the, then the problem within that IP is the NP is, no, is missing. See the point? So this, this sentence should be, should actually be John seems space to be angry. All right? That is to say, the, the spec of IP, of the lower IP, is not available in this sentence. Are you, are you with me? Okay. Now see what happens. The, the, the suggestion given to this problem is, in reality, the verb seem also does not assign theta role to its, its surface subject position. To the subject position, that is the real subject of the higher IP. Let, let me draw this thing here and then you will be able to see this thing. See, we have an IP. This is the IP, right? And here we are talking about, so I'll stop here, okay? I'll stop here. So we are saying if we have a sentence like John, right, present seems uh, to be angry. Okay. Remember, in a in a complement IP. Okay. I I think I can talk to you about these complexities at this level now. In a complement IP, a subject, the spec of IP can stay empty only when this VP is non-finite. That you have seen earlier also. The moment a VP is finite, it cannot remain, it cannot take an empty NP. Get my point? In a finite IP, this position must be filled. In a finite IP, this position must be filled. A empty spec IP in the complement position is allowed only when the VP is non-finite. In other words, the IP is non-finite. Clear? Great. So, the, the story here is the following. The, the story is, look, actually this verb seem, this verb seem has the same problem that it cannot assign a theta role to its spec IP. Okay? And so, so, to begin with, this is not there. Okay? To begin with, this is not there. That is what you see on the screen in the deep structure. Okay? So, the deep structure tells you it is just not there because it cannot assign. It, it does not get a theta role. If it is not there, then where do you see it? 
you see that here, right? Here, here is John. What's the problem here? Why it cannot stay here? It, it may be here in the deepest structure, but it cannot stay here. Why? You should be able to answer this. Look at this. The non-finite IP cannot assign case to this. So, if it stays here, it is caseless and this, this verb does not have a theta capacity. See the problem? The solution is, what is the position here? Subject position, right? So, the, the way it is stated is, this NP moves from a subject position to another subject position. So, seen as a verb is a raising verb which allows raising from subject position to the subject position. This is why it is called a raising verb. And to be more precise, raising verb of the type which allows subjects to move to subject position. Should not be, should not be too complicated to understand at this stage. Yes, no, complicated. If, if, there is, if there are doubts, you can ask me. There is, we, ha we have a couple of minutes to talk about that. If you still think you have doubt, think about this and let me know. Now, let me show you another sentence. I come to the second one, Mary appears to be impatient. I come to that in a, minute, in a moment. Look at the last, look at the third sentence that I have. What is the sentence that I have? Third one, I am sorry I do not have numbers there. It seems that John is angry. Do you see that? It seems that John is angry. So, semantically speaking, John seems to be angry and it seems that John is angry. Both are the same. Are they? Syntactically, what is the difference between the two sentences? Particularly, particularly look, look at the third sentence now. It seems that John is angry. No, 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 no. it is still IP. Oh, I am sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, okay. So, okay. Thanks. So, you are saying in the, in this case, this is a CP, but within the CP, we have an IP, right? True. But this is still an IP. True, true. You are right. So, what, what do you see within that CP? Within that CP, the IP is finite IP, okay? If the IP is finite, then there is no problem for John to stay there. The John can stay there just because the IP is finite. That John is angry is a good sentence. All right. Now, then the problem is we do not have anything here. Right? If if this is not L, if this is happy in its original position, why, why do things move? See this thing. Things move because there were some problem in the original position. Right? It happens in, in, in normal life of people also. We go from one place, place to the other definitely for a reason. Right? So, if, if this thing is happy in its original position, then this remains empty. Right? And this position cannot have a theta role. Anything that comes here must have a theta role of its own because it is not going to assign any theta role. So, in the third sentence, what happens is, since nothing can move out of this, we put an empty subject, which is it. It is an expletive, does not have a theta role, neither does it need one. We put it. Why do we put it? To fulfill the universal requirement of the principle that we cannot leave the subject position empty. You, your other, other stories get satisfied or not, I do not care. 
but the sentence position must be filled. Now there is one more thing which I have not talked to you and, and not that, that, that is also not part of this course. See, when you try to grade principles, okay, uh, so far we have seen several instances of principles, right? We have not looked at grading of principles. Somebody was asking me one of these days this question, grading of principles. If you look at the gradation of such principles, some are stronger and some are weaker. Okay? The, fact, the, the principle that every sentence must have a subject is a very strong principle. Okay? It does not care for a situation that in some situations we, the verbs are weak, it cannot assign you a theta row. It says it does not matter, I just need a subject. Then in such cases, what, do, what human mind does, it takes an element in a language like English, removes the semantic meaning of it, it, has, it, it gets no meaning, becomes a functional element and puts it in that place to just satisfy the position. And then we get a, uh, get a sentence like, it seems that John is angry. Now why am I talking about the second sentence? The reason for me to talk about this sentence that it seems that John is angry is to show you, for you to see it with, see it with clarity that in the first sentence, looking at the D structure, John is in a position to move, in, that is in search of the case, which, is, which was also the story of, of passives. In this case, the verb is not passive, but the story is the same. So it needs to move. Therefore, this is a third example of com what we say compulsory movement of an element from one position to the other position. Okay? Now, uh, very quickly, the second sentence appear is also an example of a, of a raising verb where you see exactly same thing happening. Mary appears to be impatient, the, the deep structure is appears Mary to be impatient. Who is impatient? When we say Mary appears to be impatient, if this has two IPs, does it have two IPs? In both the IPs, who is impatient? Mary, right? So Mary is the, an, so in the deep structure you see, the Mary is the subject of the predicate impatient. Right? But in the surface structure, you see Mary being the subject of seen. It must have moved from that, that place. Do, do you see what I am trying to see? I am trying to show you that the fact that Mary is impatient, it must have generated lower. Right? It, the, and in the second sentence, you see, that is on the surface structure, you see Mary being the subject of the verb seen. So, the sentence is not like Mary seems John to be impatient. The idea is Mary seems Mary to be impatient. Right? So, the, the NP Mary again cannot stay there because of the, because the predicate is infinite, no case to the subject position, therefore it needs to go to a place where it can receive subject, Re receives, receive a case and satisfy subject requirement as well. Okay? Therefore, it is an example of compulsory movement in the language. Again, when you have a sentence like, it appears that Mary is impatient, in such a sentence you do not need, do not need the movement of Mary because it gets case. Read the sentence. Have you seen these sentences before? These types of sentences? The only point which I did not mention, these sentences remind you of what? A case marking and what type of case marking? Exceptional. Exceptional case marking, very nice. What I did not mention at that point is all the verbs that require exceptional case marking, which is the verbs like want, the verbs like prove. You can work on the verb prove, let me work with you on the verb want. What happens in the verb want? Want is a verb which needs an object. So, transitive verb needs an object. And what is the object of the verb? This verb? Him to go. Right? 
the problem with the him is it doesn't receive the, it doesn't have any case assigner below right and it the, the problem is where did it get accusative case the accusative case is assigned to the whole of the complement not just to the to the part of the complement okay so where did it get a case beyond the exceptional case marking which which we saw we are not changing anything to exceptional case marking we are just going to add one thing there is another solution that is given to it the, the what happens is this subject moves to the object position of the higher class and then gets the accusative case okay so such a verb is called raising to object position now this has a problem okay i don't want to show you the problem right away this has a problem but i just want you to just want to tell you that the, the one of the reasons to one of the ways to deal with exceptional case marking is also the raising construction where the argument is from the subject position it raises to the object position okay where it receives accusative case all right it it's a weak argument nonetheless i just wanted you to see however what you have seen with the subject raising construction is not a weak weak argument that's that's a very strong motivation there is a very strong motivation of movement from the subject of the lower clause to the subject of the higher clause in the subject raising cases all right so we we stop here with this raising constructions and then